Uh, so, hello everyone. Welcome to the Database Development Weekly Webcast. Uh, I'm Shakib. I work on UI for the Application Express team. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter. It's just uh, Shakib. And uh, you can also tweet me your questions, though you can just use the chat as well. So today I want to talk about Theme Roller. Uh, uh, you guys may have seen demos about Universal Theme and Theme Roller in the past, but I just want to go a little bit in depth and kind of show you what this new feature is all about. So here I'm running on the uh, Oracle Database Cloud, and I have Apex 5 running. And uh, this is just P-Track that I installed a while back. This is like, you know, your very basic application I can kind of click through. And at the very bottom of your screen, your developer toolbar, you'll see this button called Theme Roller. So if I hit that button, you'll see that in a second, you'll get this dialog that shows up on your screen. And that's going to allow you to kind of change the look and feel of your application in, in real time, live. So you know, here's the screen. And this is going to be your best friend if you're interested in kind of, you know, taking your Apex 5 universal theme-based application and making it match your company's branding or maybe you want to just change some colors to kind of, you know, uh, increase the you know, readability of your application or increase contrast in a few places or just want to kind of play with some colors and adjust it to your liking. So you hit this button, this dialog shows up, right? And there's a lot of things going on. I'll start from the very beginning. So kind of like in Page Designer in Apex 5, there's a lot of options that Theme Roller provides, but not all of them are important. So we have these two buttons here to show the common properties as we do right now. And we also show you the, you know, show you all properties. So if I was to click this button, you'll see that this list uh, of you know groups expands, and I see a lot more things like uh, layout, navigation, and so on. So that's the first thing. I can also make changes to my uh, you know colors or whatever. So I, I have this color wheel here. I'll just make a quick change, and if I don't like the way it looks, I can use the undo button here. And excuse that banging in the back. So I can just do undo and redo as much as I want. There's also a search functionality right here. So if I'm looking to change a particular color, let's say I'm changing header, I can just type in header and I'll see all the, you know, the colors that I can change that have header. So for example, here I can change my header accent. And because the header accent is used everywhere, you see that change happens. And I can also just undo my change. Uh, let's say that I make another change to some other thing. So this is the actual header itself. If I make this uh, orange or something, I can hit this reset button, and that'll reset everything back to the way it was. Uh, and finally, there's like this help button you can use to kind of get some very primitive help. It just kind of shows you how things are stored and so on. So that's a toolbar at the very top. Uh, the next thing you see is a style, right? So with Universal Theme, we ship with two different, uh, three different styles. There's Vita, uh, which is the blue look, and we have Vita Slate which is this uh, you know, uh, graphite grayscale look and feel. And then we also have this Vista UI as well. And this uh, looks similar to the Alta UI look from Oracle. So we'll go back to uh, Vita Slate and Vita Current. If you have ad additional theme styles, then you can set them as well, and you'll see them in that list. So now let's just go through uh, the color wheel. So the first thing is this color wheel uses attractive color and you can kind of make changes here. I can drag some things around and you'll see that the application just changes colors instantly, right? This is your own application. I'm just kind of moving around a few different like uh, points here and you see that my application changes. Um, typically I don't use the color wheel for a lot of things. It, it's, a, it's a good way to get a feeling for how colors could look, but 99% uh, of the time, you probably won't use the results you get out of color wheel. So I'm just going to hit reset. So let's say that I'm working on something and this color, this theme roller is too big, it's in the way. I can quickly minimize it and kind of get it out of the way and kind of explore the website. So let's go to the home page. And you'll notice that as I browse through different pages, theme roller will remember where it was. So I dropped it here last time. I can go to action items and it'll pop up exactly where it was. And all of your settings will also be changed. So let's let's start making a theme style really quickly. 
So I'll go into global colors and we have these two accents here, the header accent and the body accent. And the goal was that you change this, just these two, two colors and that will change the entire UI of your application. So if I wanted to make a green theme, all I need to do is kind of change this header accent to be some green that I like, maybe something like uh, this, and just change the body accent. If you don't want the body area to be uh, white, I can make it a different color. So I can make it a little bit darker gray or purple, and I can just kind of change these colors around. So now you see that the application is changing. Uh, I can also change uh, a lot of other common components. So, you know, links are used throughout the application. I can change all the links to be a certain color. So I can change them all to be this bright blue. And I can also change the focus. So you see, as I'm on the search field, you see this like green focus outline. I can change this as well to be something different. So I can change it to be red, for example, right? And you see the red. We also have a number of uh, different things. It's not just limited to colors. We also have these border radiuses you can configure. So let's say I drill down into uh, an, a, a milestone. And again, you'll notice that theme roller will pop back up and it'll remember all of the settings that I've set. And here I can change the container border radius. So if I change this to like 12 pixels or something, you'll see that the rounded edges here have changed, right? And I can always, Let's say that I wanted to undo some changes. I can just hit this undo button and that will reset all of the changes in that particular group. So I made some changes to the board radius. Let me change the titles bar to be this brighter green. And if I don't like those changes, I can hit this undo button and it will reset it back to the way it was. So my border radius went back to two and the title bar went back to being this light green. I can change a, a lot of other things as well. So if I go into show all, you'll see that now I have buttons. So I can change the way my buttons look. So I can change the board radius only for my buttons. So if I want my buttons to be nice and round, I can quickly do that here. Uh, you'll also notice this little checkbox here. So you'll see a checkbox or a warning icon, and that's the color contrast analysis that's done. So for the normal button, for example, this view project button, the background color is this white and the text is this. And if I hover over this check mark, it'll show me that the two colors, the foreground and the background, they meet the color contrast uh, ratio for uh, web accessibility guidelines. And I can adjust this and see that number update in real time. So if I was to make this button really dark, uh, you'll see two th things happen. First, the text color has now been inverted. So we take into account the background color and we calculate what the foreground should be to provide sufficient contrast. And you'll also see that, hey, the color still works, but if I was to choose some really strange color, then at this point, the white is not so legible. You'll see that it, it's a 4.3 ratio. If the text is really big, 18 points or 14 points in bold, then it'll pass, but otherwise, you should consider changing this text. Let's say that I don't want to make these changes. I can also undo individual properties just by holding the Alt or Option key. You'll see this little icon and I can click on it and it'll reset it back to the original color. So that's another way to do undo. So we have undo at the property level, at the group level, and at the global level. Uh, there's a number of other attributes as well in Theme Roller that you can change. So I can go quickly into uh, layout and I have a lot more flexibility here. So rather than just the numbers and colors, uh, I can change like, you know, different layouts as well. So for my navigation tree, which is this thing on the left, I can kind of collapse and expand it. But if it's not wide enough to fit my content, I can also adjust this. So I can say, you know, make this 220 pixels wide. Or make this really short. Uh, let's say I go to another page which has some left sidebar. So maybe I click on milestones and you see this list of milestones, this, this list of filters here. What I can do is I can also change this, the width of that region. So I can say instead of 240 pixels, I can make it 200 or I can make it uh, really wide depending on the content that I have. Uh, if I go into a detail page, so let's click on a milestone. And here, I can also change the width of this right side area. So this is the actions column. I can, again, change that width as well, and that'll just change. But otherwise, everything will work as intended. Now, if I want to, I can also set a, a, 
a max width for the content of my page. So if I set this to, sorry, right here, to 726, uh, 768 pixels, you'll notice that the content in the middle will be centered and it will not exceed uh, you know, that, that size. So if I was to go back to my homepage, for example, you'll notice that the regions will kind of fit right in the middle. So as soon as the enroller loads, you'll see that it fits right in the middle. And this is useful if, for uh, you know, designing applications that have a, you know, a fixed pixel width you don't want the content to go above, and it's primarily text-based where a lot of reading is involved, where if you're, making, if you make the window too wide, then it could be difficult to read content. So that's the options that we have built in. You can do a, a lot of things. I, I made some uh, theme earlier called Matrix, and if I was to change my theme, notice the theme roller will prompt me saying that, hey, you haven't made changes to this theme. If you really change a the theme, then you'll lose all these changes. So. I'll click, I'll click cancel and let me save this green theme that I made. So I'll call it green webcast. At this point, the theme is saved to the database. It also saves all the uh, configuration options that I've set. And I can always go back to it anytime. If I close theme roller, you'll notice that it goes back to the blue look which my application originally had. That's because I didn't set the theme as current. So that's easy, I can just open up Theme Roller and I can set it as the current theme. And now, if I just close the Theme Roller, it'll just refresh the page again, and now the green look will be my default look for my application. I can go through and this is just you know, a normal application. Uh, let's open it back up again. And I just wanna show you an, an another uh, way to add custom styles. So, Sure, you can change all of these you know, groups that we have, and we have quite a few groups, and you know, maybe we have something you want to change, but if we don't have something you want to change, then you can always write your own custom CSS, and this is at the very bottom here. So let's say, for instance, I wanted to change this col the, the, the color of this number three here. So what I would typically do is right-click on something and inspect it. And right here, you'll see that it's the class is T dash badge list value and the color comes from this anchor right here. If I wanted to override this, I could simply copy this selector and add a new property here and you know pass it that and I can say color green. Right? So now that's green. Sure right now that's changes only stored in Chrome. If I click on inspector style sheet, I'll get all the changes. So let's make a few more changes and we'll put them to theme roller. So I made that green uh, let's make this icon different color as well. So I see this icon right here. It's part of the alert icon. And right now it happens to be like this warning icon. So if I click and just copy this over, let's say for all my warning icons, I want to make them red. So there's are two changes that I've made. I can click on Inspector Style Sheet. I have all the CSS changes right here. I can just copy this. Uh, I can close out of here and paste this change right here. If I was to save my theme style and refresh the page, those custom styles will be added to the page. So now that icon will be red and the text will be green. That's a simple way of adding custom styles to your application. Uh, again, all of this is stored in your database. So let's take a look at how this is stored. So I'll click on edit application and to shared components, themes. I'll go into my universal theme. And under styles, you'll see my green webcast theme style. And you'll also notice it's the current one. Right here, there's a few uh, important things to note. The first is uh, this is the input parameter file URL. This is the uh, sort of the brains behind that theme style. This, this, this shows you exactly what colors I can change, what type of variables I have, what type of groupings I have. And this is the output of compiling this file with the, with the colors you've chosen. So this file, the CSS file is stored in the database and if you wanted to, you could save this file and put it on your file system for a better performance. If you expand this theme roller JSON configuration, you'll see the actual JSON object for all the changes you've made. 
So for example, you'll see the custom CSS that you wrote, so for the badge list and alert icon, and you'll see all the other variables that you've overridden. So if you wanted to copy a theme style from one application to another, what you would do is you'd create a new theme style, copy over the input parameter URL and the JSON configuration, and run theme roller. At that point, theme roller will run, it'll compile, it'll take your JSON configuration and compile that theme style, and then you can save it at that point. Uh, I'll show you a quicker way to kind of share theme styles between applications. So let's go back in my application. Uh, I've decided that I really like this theme. While having theme roller open, I can open up my JavaScript console, and I can just type in apex.utr.config. Uh, that'll give me a nice little message that says, you know, hey, paste the following line of JavaScript code into my you know, JS console to load this current configuration. And here's the code. So what I'll do is I'll go to another application where I don't have the green webcast theme. So let's go back into Apex. And I'll go into the sample database application, right? So now I'm here, very different application. I can open up theme loader just to show you that I don't have that uh, green webcast theme in here, right? So I just have uh, the ones I had before. And what I'll do is I'll open up console again, and this time I'll paste that line. I'll, I'll make one slight modification. This is the bug in Apex 5, which will be fixed in 501, uh, is to add the namespace. So I just add Apex dot, and I'll hit enter. And what's happening is that custom configuration from my other application, the theme cell that I made, is now loaded into theme roller in this application. So now I can quickly save this and call this, you know, green webcast. And I have the theme style in this application as well. So it's an easy way to kind of share theme styles. Uh, if you wanted to, for example, uh, let's say you made a really nice theme style and you wanted to share it online with, uh, uh, you know, the Apex community, you, all you need to do is really just share this one line of JavaScript code and tell them, hey, just open up theme roller, you know, run this code, and you'll get that configuration loaded. So that's an easy way to kind of, uh, you know, save theme styles and move them around. Something else you can do as well is you can have, you know, multiple different theme styles. You can also pick the theme style from your application. So if I go into admin, for a sample database app and a lot of our packaged applications, you'll see like a theme style page. And this will let you actually change the theme style uh, at the application level through the UI. So let me just close theme roller. So let's say that I don't want to use Vita, I want to use the Vista UI. I can set that from the application. If you want to see how this is done, it's a pretty straightforward API that we call. Uh, you can unlock our sample database app or any of our packaged apps to see how it's done. But you can expose this to your users as well. Now, the setting isn't remembered per user, it's for the entire application. So if you were to change it here, anyone using the sample database application would also see this new theme style. So you know, that's a quick rundown of theme roller. I can show you a few other theme styles that I've built. Let me see if I can find some applications. So maybe the, I think I had some more one, more interesting theme styles in p -track. So I have this um, matrix theme style. I'll just change it. And you can do a lot of different things, right? You can change the colors. Uh, I, I wanted to show you a few other things. I'll go back to the Vita theme style. And uh, let's say you know, you're working uh, late hours, and the, the bright uh, colors could be kind of you know, annoying to your eyes, could cause some eye strain. You can make a really dark theme style in no time. So if I just change like, the body accent and the background, you'll notice that my theme is now very, very dark, right? And all the text is still legible, all the colors still kind of work, the contrast is still there. So this is an easy way to kind of, you know, if you're working late at night, you want to use your Apex application, uh, go ahead and make a theme style, something like this, and call it, you know, like night vision or whatever you want, and you can use it. So hopefully that's a quick rundown of uh, Theme Roller, and uh, I'll, I can now take questions. If no one has any questions, I can, I'm more than happy to demo other things. If you want to ask Shakib a question, just unmute your mic, or I can unmute all the mics now, or Shakib, we can end the recording now and let people 
Um, yeah, we, we can end the recording and we can ask questions. Uh, like, uh, uh, I can I can be on here for a while and just kind of answer any kind of. Uh, there is a question in the chat. Someone's asking, can a user set the dark settings themselves? Uh, so, if you save the dark theme style, then your user could set it for the entire application. They cannot set it just for themselves. So that's a limitation that we have in Apex 5.0. Uh, we hope to address it in a future version of Apex. Uh, there's another question in the chat. Uh, you showed that users can change themes within the app. How quickly can you make specific ones? Can you set the application to change under timer or a specific time of day? Uh, yeah, I don't see why you wouldn't be able to run some kind of uh, uh, run some code that changes the theme style for your application based on time of day. So if you wanted to have like this night, uh, night vision look and that changes at, I don't know, 9 p.m., I think you can totally do that. So Shakib, you need like the Google homepage themes, like on holidays, it automatically updates to like Christmas green and red and Easter can be pastel colors and that's what you guys should do for 5.1. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one idea that we were floating around as well was to have a theme generator button. So you just like uh, hit this button, and it would go and pick the appropriate colors for you. So you wouldn't have to mess around with you know picking the right hues and the right colors. It would just kind of do it for you, right? So that would be kind of cool. Uh, uh, we also plan to introduce a lot more theme styles. Right now we have the Vida look and feel, which is you know this modern flat kind of look, and we have Vida slate, which is a variation. Then we have the Vista theme style, but we do plan to have a lot of other uh, you know, theme styles and featured versions. So I have a question from uh, Dan. Can we set a particular color? Say we wanted to use the SVG purple. How can I set that particular color? So yeah, I'll show you how to do that. Let's go find the SVG purple. All right, so you want to use, I'm guessing, this background color right here. So on my Mac, I have an application called SIP, but you can use any kind of color pick. So if you want this purple, I'll just click on it. I'll copy that color. And let's make a really quick uh, Star Woods theme. So I'll just change my global colors. Let's just change the header. You'll notice right here I can actually paste in whatever color I want. So I can paste that in. And uh, it does look kind of similar. Maybe they use like a white, uh, bright white for some of that text. So I can change that as well. So I can go into containers. Maybe the header text is not purple, it's fully white. Yeah, so we can totally do that. Um, next question from Christoph was, can you show the JS command to export theme again? Sure, so you open up your console and just type in apex.utr.config and that will tell you exactly what to copy and paste. Uh, there's just a minor bug that it's missing the apex prefix, so when you want to paste this, you want to type in apex dot and then paste it in, and then that'll work. You have to have ThemeRoller open to do this. You can't just uh, run it uh, when ThemeRoller is not open because the libraries for ThemeRoller uh, will not be there on the page. Any other questions? You can do some like uh, really cool, wacky things. I'll see if I can pull up some other theme styles while uh, people come up with some more questions. So let's see if I have any in sample charts maybe. Uh, one thing I can talk about as well is uh, right now th there's, there are some bugs in Apex 5 where we couldn't change the color of these, uh, you know, these uh, this cards list and the colors here and even the colors and charts but we plan to fix in the future version so that if you have a chart it will use the same colors from your theme roller palette. So uh, although I can't demonstrate that now, this does work uh, in our in development instances. And hopefully in the future version, you'll be able to change your color palette right here. And all of these colors will be used by the various different components. So they'll be used by your D3 charts. They'll be used by cards. Uh, they'll be used uh, wherever color is kind of used in your application. So that's that. I'll see if I can find some theme styles that are pretty cool in the meantime. And if you have any question at all, please feel free to enter it in the chat or speak up. Let's see, maybe checklist manager. I can show you the Vista uh, theme UI as well. So this is uh, made to kind of 
mimic the Alta UI from Oracle. So if you're extending your ADF applications or uh, you want to make applications that kind of follow the new Alta UI from Oracle, maybe you're building some cloud extensions or something, uh, you can use this theme style and it closely mimics what Alta UI looks like. So if you go to the Oracle Cloud, if you have a service, uh, if you don't have a schema service, you can sign up for a free trial. The admin panel, all the UI looks similar to uh, this. And with Apex, uh, five out of the box, you get this Vista theme style that you can use to change it. So here's a question. Can you change the fonts of the text? Uh, yeah, you can do that as well. So I, I can go demo this really quickly. So let's go into P-Track again. And I already have it running here. And uh, let's say that I wanted to change this font. Right now, it's using Helvetica New. Uh, I wanted to change something else. Do they use a different font here? Yeah, so let's find out whatever font SPG uses. So they're using some sans book light, but they're using L Arial. Okay, so maybe that won't work. I don't want to load in a separate font. But I can type in right here. So I can just type in, you know, body and font family, comic sans, just for fun. Wait, does that not work? Well, I can type in anything here. So I can type in career if I wanted to, or I can change to be whatever I want. Uh, this question, so the colors that you select in theme roller will not flow through to any charts, correct? Uh, that is correct. Any charts will not take the colors from the theme roller. Uh, will you guys be using any charts for future releases, or will you be going to a new package? Um, I can comment on future direction, but I think the plan is to not uptake new releases of uh, any charts right now. Uh, we're not sure uh, what solution we're going to go with for charting for uh, future versions of Apex, but we definitely that's that's a, definitely a, an area that we're focusing on. Are there any plans for a public space where people can share their themes, maybe the Apex Community Central? Uh, that's a great idea. Uh, we do have a plan to kind of have a kind of this theme exchange or theme sharing website. Uh, unfortunately, that hasn't uh, come to fruition yet. But uh, I would love to see a, a website, even on Apex Plugin or maybe on Apex Community Central or, or any place where you can kind of share theme styles. All you're willing to do is kind of share that one JavaScript snippet and share a screenshot, and now you can kind of share these theme styles with the community at large. So I would love to see that. Uh, we haven't done it just yet just because we don't have a lot of time, but uh, it's a great idea. You might have the record to keep for the most questions in one of these webcasts. So. Oh, really? OK. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> yeah, so uh, hey, if, yeah, uh, for, for the next few minutes, if you have any other question, you can. So are there any plans for a public space? Oh, what can I win? Oh. Christoph, everybody, has asked the, the most questions, I think, in this chat. So you get bragging rights. Well, you, can, you have our admiration. That's right. I'm going to turn off the recording just in case we have shy people. And sure. uh, those listening in, thanks for attending. And uh, we'll have another topic up next week. Yeah, I hope this was helpful. Uh, I know it was really quick and very informal, but uh, we hope to have these kinds of things. So if, if, you, if there's a topic you want to learn about, an universal theme or Apex UI or anything at all, you know, I'll, I'll, I'm more than happy to come on again and kind of talk about these things. So uh, you know, tweet me or send an email or... Talk to Jeff and we'll, we'll make it happen.